Hello and welcome back people. My name is Reza Afshar. This is Chris Bridgen and got, this is a really extensive, um, excellent video actually people um, and it's about what happens if you come against Israel and mm. um, what are the consequences. So, so this is really good now. I, I beg you to watch this. Mm. Yeah, so we've been talking about this for a while now, you know, putting this video together. Uh, we finally got it together and uh, I hope it sends a clear sign to all you guys watching. Mm. Okay, so this video is to show us all what we believe to be warnings and judgments from God when an attempt is made to divide the land of Israel or when the land is divided. So first, let us look at a bit of history as to why we believe God is bringing about these warnings and judgments. So, in 1948, God gave the land of Israel back to the Jewish people as he promised in scripture over two and a half thousand years ago. And this happened when British control of the land ended on the 14th of May 1948. And the same day, the declaration of the state of Israel was proclaimed. In a single day, the country of Israel was reborn, thus fulfilling Isaiah chapter 66, part verse 8, which reads, Can a country be born in a day, or a nation be brought forth in a moment? Yet no sooner is Zion in labour than she gives birth to her children. So this is what the land of Israel looked like in 1948, and Israel is in yellow. Then, in 1967, during the Six-Day War, Israel captured the Egyptian Sinai, the Gaza Strip, the West Bank and the Golan Heights. Now, according to scripture, this land was part, not all, but part of what God had promised to Abraham and his descendants, the Israelites or the Jewish people. Genesis 15 verse 18 reads, In the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land, from the river of Egypt, unto the great river, the river Euphrates. And here is a map of what that land would look like. And the border of the land is in black, and this is an approximation. And as you can see, it encompasses the land that Israel captured in 1967. But since 1967, the land of Israel began to shrink. By 1982, as a result of the Israel-Egypt Peace Treaty of 1979, Israel had withdrawn from all of the Sinai Peninsula. Then in 1994, the Palestinian Authority was created. And by 1995, the West Bank was divided up into areas A, B and C. And the areas in red were now either under full civil and security control by the Palestinian Authority or under Palestinian civil control and joint Israeli-Palestinian security control. Israel had lost even more land. Due to the persistent external pressure con to continue to divide up the land, in 2005, Israel handed the Gaza Strip to the Palestinian Authority. And even today, the nation still want to take away all of the West Bank from Israel and hand it over completely to the Palestinian Authority and create a Palestinian state. And God has forewarned us of a judgment for dividing up his land. And this is Joel chapter 3 verse 2. And it says, I will gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. There I will put them on trial for what they did to my inheritance, my people Israel because they scattered my people among the nations and divided up my land. So this piece of scripture speaks of what is to come. But we believe God has still sent judgments for what has already been done. And we feel that these judgments have mainly come in the form of hurricanes, storms, floodings, earthquake, again, as God warns us he will in scripture. Nahum 1 verse 3 reads, The Lord is slow to anger but great in power. The Lord will not leave the guilty unpunished. His ways in the whirlwind and the storm and clouds are the dust of his feet. So let us look at some of these events that we believe God has judged according to the people that have come against Israel. Okay, 
30th of October 1991, the Madrid Peace Conference. George H. Bush opens historic Mideast Conference where he attempted to divide the land of Israel in exchange for peace with the Palestinians. The same day, the perfect storm hits the North Atlantic. Two weather systems clash over the Atlantic Ocean, causing 40 to 80 foot waves. This massive surf caused extensive coastal flooding, particularly in Massachusetts. President Bush's home and vacation compound were severely damaged by the storm. Waves as high as his three-story house filled the house with seawater and caused extensive damage. The Madrid Peace Conference talks continue and move to Washington DC. Now 12 meetings were held in Washington from the 9th of December 1991 to the 24th of January 1994. On the 24th of August 1992 during the times these meetings took place, the most destructive hurricane in US history comes ashore, Hurricane Andrew. It produced an estimated $26.5 billion in damage and leaving 180,000 homeless in Florida. Alongside these meetings in Washington, Negotiations were also taking place in secret as an outgrowth of the Madrid Peace Conference called the Oslo Accord. Now the Oslo Accord provided for the creation of the Palestinian Authority. And as we've heard, the Palestinian Authority would govern Israeli territory under their control. Now the Oslo Accords were signed in Washington DC on the 13th of September 1993 in the presence of Yasser Arafat the Israeli Prime Minister and US President Bill Clinton. Leading up to this signing, severe flooding was affecting parts of the US and would be known as the Great Flood of 1993. The flooding began in April and ended in October 1993, several weeks after the Oslo Accords were signed in Washington DC. The flood was among the most costly and devastating to ever occur in the US with $15 billion in damages. 16th of January 1994, President Bill Clinton meets with Syria's President Hafez al-Assad in Geneva and they talk about a peace agreement with Israel that includes Israel giving up the Golan Heights. Within 24 hours, a powerful 6.7 earthquake rocks Southern California, the North Ridge earthquake. The death toll was 57, with more than 8,700 injured. In addition, property damage was estimated to be between 13 billion and 40 billion dollars, making it one of the costliest natural disasters in US history. 15th of October 1998, Middle East peace talks begin in Maryland, US for nine days. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat meet at the Y River Plantation and the talks focus on Israel giving up 13% of the West Bank to the Palestinians. On the 17th of October, two days after the talks began, heavy rain hit Texas that surprised experts. A National Weather Service, Service report said the event had developed explosively. A pair of hurricanes over the eastern Pacific and a near stationary cold front led to disastrous flash flooding in Texas. The event claimed 31 lives and produced $750 million in property losses. And the heaviest rain areas met the criteria for a 500 year flood event. And 20 counties were declared federal disaster areas. June 2004, Israel's cabinet approved in principle 
Prime Minister Ariel Sharon's plan to withdraw from the Gaza Strip. In Washington, the Bush administration welcomed the move, describing it as a courageous and historic step. By the 22nd of August 2005, the Israeli evacuation was complete. And the very next day, on August the 23rd, 2005, Hurricane Katrina formed over the Bahamas. It struck Florida and then continued on where it struck landfall a second time on August the 29th in southeast Louisiana. At least 1,200 and 45 people died in the hurricane and subsequent floods, making it the deadliest United States hurricane since 1928. And it was also the costliest natural disaster in the history of the United States. Total property damage was estimated at $108 billion, roughly four times the damage wrought by Hurricane Andrew in 1992. Four months later, on January the 4th, 2006, Israeli Prime Minister Ariel Sharon suffered a stroke. He remained in a permanent vegetative state until his death in January 2014. And finally, 3rd of June 2016, Peace talks take place in Paris, France. John Kerry and Ban Ki-moon attend the summit aimed at restarting Israeli-Palestinian negotiations to divide the land of Israel by setting up a Palestinian state. And the day the talks took place, severe flooding was taking place in Paris and across France. The River Seine peaked at 6.07 metres the day the talks took place. The river's highest level in more than 30 years. And over the next couple of days, more than 20,000 people were evacuated across France. And in central France, some towns were hit by the worst flooding in more than 100 years. Now from these events, to me, it's clear to see that God is judging the nations who come against Israel. Obadiah 1 verse 15 says, The day of the Lord is near for all nations. As you have done, it will be done to you. Your deeds will return on your own head. So a warning there to um, whatever you do to mm -hmm. Israel. It's going to come mm. back upon you mm. and there's no escaping it. Mm. It's coming from a just loving God. A just well, loving God, yeah. That, that yeah. is saying that as well. <clears throat> That's not harsh. No, That's it's... That's just how it is. <laughs> yeah, it's a righteous judgment. God has warned us. He's warned us in scripture. The mm. warnings have been there for over 2,000 years mm. and it's time for us to take notice of mm. what God is saying. If, if we ignore God, if we ignore his laws... If we ignore his judgments, then what, what, what can we expect? And if we ignore his chosen <clears throat> people, I mean, and we ignore, you know, Israel mm. as well. You know, as Christians, we are the, you know, we're grafted in, aren't we? Into, yeah, into we the could. Audrey. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 that still remained when God was talking about his chosen people. Um, it doesn't say, right, okay, yeah, you're not chosen anymore. Sorry, Abraham, you're not the. Um, yeah, you know, there's no it's scripture a, saying, okay, yeah, that's all finished now. We're, we're doing something else. You know, it's an everlasting covenant. It's an everlasting covenant until um, whatever. until <laughs> the end, there, until the earth ends, really, until there's something else going on. But yeah. it's still the same. Yeah, it? yeah. And just in case you're wondering, because yeah, you know, it seems quite harsh that you think, okay, you know, it's the leaders of the countries, you know, coming against Israel. Why? Would the people of the of, of the land or their particular land suffer? Why would the Americans suffer? Why would the French suffer mm. for the things that the leaders have done wrong? Well, unfortunately, that's the way God judges, and it's mm. a scriptural judgment. If if we look at uh, if you look at one Chronicles chapter twenty one, it talks about uh, King David. King David sent his commanders to uh, count the fighting men throughout Israel, and he was doing it in in pride. He wanted to see how great his army and great his country had become but 
it was evil in the sight of God because it was God who made King David the man he is. It was God who made Israel the country that it was. And it was God who, who gave really this, this great army. And, and God sent a judgment on the people because of what the leader had done, because of what King David had done. And an angel of the Lord went out and struck down 70,000 men of Israel because of what King David had done. Wow. So um, it's the judgment, unfortunately, came against the people, mm. even though it was effectively one man doing mm. wrong. And it's God doing it, not Satan, like people keep saying. Exactly, yeah. It was yeah. God bringing about the judgment and not <coughs> Satan. But so it was Satan that was tempting his heart. It was, and King, obviously King David went with it. And King David really should have known better. Yeah. Because it was, he, he, you know, he, mm. all of his life, you know, God had sort of, you know, guided and and, mm. uh, and uh, brought up King David and, you know, from nothing to be the greatest king of Israel, really, mm. apart from the Lord, of course. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, guys, you know, it's uh, we, we don't always have the answers to why God does what he does, mm. unfortunately, but that's really what comes back to faith, trusting that he's, he's a just God, a righteous God, and just because we don't understand everything doesn't mean that it's wrong or it's not right or we should dismiss it. Mm. Sometimes we just got to trust in his word and say, I don't get it all the time, but you're a just God and, and, and uh, I trust you. So so. That's really good advice to everyone who reads the scriptures. It's really good to say, I don't know, I don't know. There's certain things that we do know. And I don't know what it is about human beings. I don't know, what, what is it about human beings? We always want to find out. We're always interested in things that we don't really get all the obscure stuff rather than focusing on you know mm. or on, the, on the easy stuff or the plain stuff you know mm. we're always interested in like the, the conspiracy or the you mm. know looking for that new teaching or trying to find out you know mm. some sort of quirky thing rather than just understanding you know the nice easy stuff mm. really the about, important stuff as well yeah it? the important the, stuff. the most important stuff is generally the, you know the easy stuff that's that's the thing that god values yeah. the most really the commandments to love god and yeah. love your neighbor mm. through jesus christ mm. so um but yeah <coughs> not to go off a track you know excellent excellent video really clearly states that god definitely judges nations mm. through the elements and we're seeing that again today of all this turbulence that is happening around the world and we painlessly, uh, painlessly is that the right word? Pain, it's not painlessly, Pain it's painful, I suppose, at times, isn't it? Painfully, so, yeah. <laughs> put all stuff together, yeah. Put stuff together. Tirelessly. And Tirelessly. To show you how bad things are getting, mm, really. Mm. Um, and then really, all of this stuff is really about... The, the end result for this whole thing is, is, is the same thing. It's to turn to Jesus, to, 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 to repent, to start for forgiveness to believe in him and to be saved that's the mm. whole point of the whole thing mm. that's what it always comes back to um, make sure you are right with God mm. and the only one that can make you righteous is the Lord Jesus Christ he is your righteousness mm. so give your heart give your life to him tell him that you're sorry for everything that you've done and ask him to help you walk mm. um, as best you can I would mm. say no one is perfect you're gonna mess up some of you are hurting right now. Some of them, some of you, a lot of you are beating yourself up for the things that you keep on doing. Stop doing that because the Bible says there is no condemnation with those who are in Christ Jesus. Mm. So come to the Lord Jesus Christ. You are not condemned. You will mm. be saved. You will be forgiven mm. and you will have eternal life. So I think yeah. we'll leave it there, Chris. Yeah, we? yeah. Yeah, we'll leave it there. Right Thank you, guys. We've got some more videos coming up. We really, really, really appreciate your comments. So let us know what you, what you think. Um, and uh, like and share this video with other people. Um, thank you so much. See you later. The Lord Jesus wants you to come to him just as you are. He wants you to come to him no matter what you have done in your life, no matter what mistakes you have made. He is kind, understanding and always forgiving. He cares very much about each one of us. Maybe you are unsure if you really have given your heart fully to the Lord Jesus. Maybe you would like to say yes to him for the very first time. Or maybe you would like to recommit your life to the Lord Jesus and start afresh today. The Bible says salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. The Bible also says, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. 
If you'd like to hand your life to the Lord Jesus and put your hope and trust in him, then please repeat this prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, please hear my prayer. I know you gave your life for me and I know that you are alive today. Please forgive my sins. Come into my heart and make your home with me. Thank you for being my Lord and Saviour. Amen. Would you like to watch a Christian film word for word from the Bible? We have the Gospel of Matthew. Ask, and it will be given to you. The Gospel of John. That is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The Gospel according to St. Luke. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And the Acts of the Apostles. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel.